Hello and welcome to Hashtag Tea Tuesday. I'm Lisa Ann Spencer. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, got a different mug today and I'm actually drinking coffee and there's a strange reason for that. So if you want to stick around and catch up with me and find out about my new mug and my beverage, stay tuned. Well, my mug says I can French press 32 ounces. So, those of you who get it, you get it. Um, you know, muscle guys and even muscle girls might say I can bench press, you know, 150 pounds, whatever. I used to could bench press 150 pounds in college. Now I just stick with the French press, making coffee. So I made me a cup of decaf tonight because it's not Tea Tuesday actually, it's Monday. And I thought I would have a cup of decaf coffee, show you this little mug which I ordered from my daughter's Redbubble store. Um, I came up with the idea and she came up with the design. There's a terrible glare on it. She got the little French press coffee pots like a barbell. Anyway. I think it's cute as can be, and I'm enjoying drinking my coffee out of it on a Monday night. Decaf, decaf coffee. I um, buy organic decaf coffee because I drink mostly decaf coffee now, and if I'm going to be having it every day, I don't want the chemicals that are found in the regular decaf coffee. So the organic is Swiss water process, so I feel a little bit better about drinking it. So anyway, just a little tidbit there. Uh, if you're interested in that or if you're a decaf coffee drinker, fortunately Kroger carries a brand, the Simple Truth store brand of organic decaf. Um, otherwise, I would order it online. I'd prefer to order roasted beans and then they would be really fresh and yummy. But this Kroger is, you know, it's not bad. It's dependable. It's good. It's a good cup of decaf. Um, anyway, so why am I filming on a Monday night instead of a Tuesday? Well, I have a big day tomorrow. Today I got the keys to our new house. So tomorrow we're getting up early, the children and I. We're going to Home Depot to rent a carpet cleaner, and then we're gonna head over to the new house and start cleaning carpet and pulling out um, some old cabinets, and there's some belongings that were left in the house. We're gonna go through those and sort um, things like that. Just spend the day there tomorrow getting things ready, so we're excited about that. Even though we know we're embarking on a very busy season of our life, I wanted to at least take the time and do a Tea Tuesday video. I feel like it might be a couple of weeks before I can do another, although um, I have shown you my book. You know, I published my book on Amazon. This is still my author's copy. It's got the Not For Sale band around it. Um, I have ordered my actual author's copies um, that are not the proofs and uh, want to show you that. I want to do a flip through, but those have not shipped yet. So when they do, I will do a flip through so that you can have a better idea of what's actually in the book. But what I wanted to do tonight, instead of doing a Bible study, well, it really will be a Bible study. Um, I'm going to do um, Proverbs chapter 9, and I will show you in my book, each chapter of the book of Proverbs is included in full. So here it is tomorrow, well, tomorrow for me, but Tuesday's date is January 9th. So I, my habit is to read through a proverb a day. Um, and I have a marking system that I use when I'm studying the Bible that I find to be very helpful for me. So I am going to turn the camera onto my book and 
to give you a close-up and just run through Proverbs chapter 9 and show you how I mark it and part of my like cross-referencing system maybe. I'm also doing this video for the sake of a Zoom group that I belong to and we're going through this book and I told the ladies that I would make a video showing them this marking system. So this is also for them. But I hope that you will tag along and maybe this will be helpful to you in your personal Bible study. It's not just for the book of Proverbs, it's for really any book of the Bible. Um, what it will do for you is help you bring out the theme of whatever chapter you're reading, um, help you uh, know what words to look up, um, how do you understand what's the point that is being made by the author. So um, I hope you'll stick around and join me for that. Before I jump to that, though, I want to say an especial thank you to my new subscribers. There's a couple of Bible study groups that I belong to, and um, so a few, I know I've had a few new subscribers recently from those groups, so I thank you. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for subscribing, and I hope you enjoy the content. All right, well, let's turn the camera around and get to it. All right, I'm set up here. I think this might be a little bit awkward. This is something that I am certainly not used to doing, but we'll give it a go. I think the camera is going to go in and out of focus every time I try to mark a passage, so um, just be patient as I go back and forth trying to get my mechanical pencil ready. I have this, I love using a mechanical pencil in my Bible. I don't write with a pen in my Bible. This is a 0.5 millimeter um, graph gear. I really like this. Um, you know, everybody has their favorite pencils and pens, right? All right, so let's just start at the beginning. Um, I like to use a bookmark, uh, one for making straight edges and um, also just it helps keep my eyes focused on the sentence that I'm focusing on and um, I can move down as I'm reading. All right, so let's look at the first verse. Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. Notice that there's a colon, so we continue. She hath killed her beast, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table, and there we have a period. So let's just deal with this opening sentence. All right, so wisdom is the um, person of interest, and the way that I mark wisdom in my Bible is I draw a little cloud around it. You could think of it as a brain, because wisdom is like, like a thought bubble. Um, wisdom has to do with thoughts and inner inner man it's not tangible so this is just a code that I use for marking in my Bible all right wisdom hath builded so half is past tense sometimes I'll just make a little um, notation P A and then T just to note that that's past tense hath builded her house all right, wisdom is referred to as a her. That's interesting to me. So I draw the female sign, you know, the circle with kind of a plus sign at the bottom. Um, and when I use my highlighters, I also would be color coding this as well. I would highlight wisdom in blue and then her in blue. Wisdom hath built her house. I always like to draw a little house around the word house, and um, it's just, it, it, it's because we'll encounter that word again, or words like it, and it helps draw my attention to it. She hath hewn out her seven pillars, right again, she, wisdom is the female. And I might also just use the little cloud. Okay, see that's going in and out of focus, but anyway. She hath, again, past tense, hewn out her seven pillars. 
anytime there's a number I'll just do me a little what you call hashtag but you know the number mark uh, maybe even write the number seven out next to it pillars pillars attract my attention I put quotes around it because that tells me this is a word I want to go look up in my concordance um, it has differing meanings throughout scripture so I just make quotations to tell myself go look that up when I'm done reading the chapter all right again she hath killed her beasts she hath mingled her wine she hath also furnished her table so several references you know to her she the things that she's done she's done in the past all right so she's very busy she's working um, she's doing something interesting here furnishing her table that reminds me of a psalm um, Psalm 23 for those of you who are familiar with it um, um, the shepherd right the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters and on and on but it's he furnished does he furnish a table make a table I can't remember see but I'm gonna go look it up when I'm done it's just a reminder she hath sent forth her maidens she crieth upon the highest place of the city that's a comma so we're going to keep reading in whoso is simple let him come in hither all right i will stop there because she starts speaking here so i put quotation marks i write myself a little note that this is a quote and then i'll eventually bracket that quote um, I think perhaps all of this chapter is just a long quote. Um, Wisdom has sent forth her maidens. That reminds me of a New Testament passage where Jesus gives a parable about sending forth these invitations to people to the wedding and they make excuses and don't come. So I will... Um, when I'm finished the sin forth I'm just going to underline it with two lines to bring my attention to that and go maybe even put quotes there even though I don't think it says exactly that what I'll do is I'll make myself a note over here and say invitation because I know that Jesus um, tells a parable in the four gospels about this all right she crieth all right so crieth i'm going to double underline and i'm going to underline at an angle like making a little megaphone anytime somebody is speaking especially crying aloud it doesn't mean she's crying like she's weeping shedding tears it means she's speaking out very loudly all right and again i probably won't mark every one of these she's because there's so many but she's crying upon the high places again another point of interest i want to go find out what does the bible mean when it's talking about high places i want to know more about that so i'm gonna quote it all right and i double underlined it the city i'm going to bracket city I always like to put brackets and really I like to draw a little city like just go ahead and make that two towers mm -hmm. all right because Proverbs chapter 9 and the book of Proverbs has many references to city which is important all right so let's start reading her quote um, whoso is simple let him turn in hither as for him that wanteth understanding she saith to him come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which i have mingled all right period so simple proverbs chapter one begins with um, the purpose statement which is to teach wisdom to the simple now being simple is a bad 
thing. It's not a good thing in scripture. So I have this little uh, mark that I use for myself. It's like, um, it reminds me of crookedness and twistedness or iniquity or wickedness. That's when I use this little um, whatever mark you want to call it to help me to remember we might think of a simple person as um, that might be a good thing. You know, there's a song about being a simple man, right? God doesn't consider it a good thing. Um, Paul tells us that he wants us to be simple concerning evil, but otherwise he wants us to be wise. So simple is bad. It's a negative word. All right, let him turn in hither. Oh, to her house. Okay, so turn in hither. So I would make the little mark for a house right here on hither. She's inviting me. Come to my house. Okay. As for him that wanteth understanding. Um, the word want usually means lack. So I'm going to write that there under it. I'm just going to write lack. Lacks. For a simple-minded person, he lacks understanding. So she's inviting him to her house so that the simple will become wise. All right, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. All right, so she's inviting him, and you might on the surface think, okay, it's literal food, bread, literal something to drink, wine, perhaps it is, but these are symbolic in scripture. So I'm going to go with, use my concordance. I'm going to look up the word bread. I'm going to look up the word wine, and I'm probably going to look them up together first to see how they're used together. And then the word mingled. Well, we know it means mixed. So, but why would she mingle? We saw that word up here in verse 2. And so we're going to do a word study on mingle as well and find out what is she talking about. And I've done that already. I know it means to dilute something. God said he's going to pour out a cup of wrath on, on the world and it's not going to be mingled. It's not going to be diluted. All right, carrying on. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding, period. All right, so again, the foolish, that's a very negative name for someone. It's just like being called simple. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. Now, I like to use these little arrow brackets um, when I come to the word way or path just to bring that to my attention um, and we're, we'll see this word if you're studying through Proverbs you'll see the word way and the word path numerous times over 50 times All right continue he that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. So when you have a, the word and, always circle it and draw an arrow to one side and an arrow to the other. The word and is very much like a link in a chain linking these two things together. It is also um, helpful for this type of parallelism where you have something on the one side of the equation and something on the other so it will help define words. So this he that reproves a scorner, it's a good thing to reprove a scorner. So one, a scorner is bad. We're going to look that up if we don't know what scorner means. It means somebody who despises, particularly despises the Word of God. So a person that reproves a scorner gets to himself shame. I wonder why that is. Why would it be shameful? He that rebukes a wicked man getteth himself a blot. So again, here's this 
wise person who is rebuking the wicked. So I'm going to make the little negative iniquity sign um, is going to get himself a blot. So he's not talking about to God, a person that reproves a scorner, he's doing a good thing. And a person that rebukes a wicked man, that's a good thing. So who's he getting himself a blot to or a shame? Only to those who don't appreciate what he's doing. All right. She says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Ah, so there we see. All right. Reprove. And when you see this, this has an implied subject. So I'm going to say you. Whoever he's addressing you, which from previous chapters we know that this is the king, a son who is destined to be king, so I like to draw a little crown. You, he's saying, do not reprove a scorner lest he hate thee. So the scorner is the wicked person, he, all right, hate is, I always put a heart, just like I do with love, because it's a choice. He's chosen to reject the person who reproves him. So the the in this case again is the king or the young man training to be king. So he's telling his son, don't reprove a scorner because he'll hate you. So that's a, a choice you have to make. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. So you have to choose. Are you going to do that? Love thee. All right. Carry on to the next one. Again, an implied subject of you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. It's pretty straightforward. I would still probably mark the ands you know, connecting this and this, when you give instruction to a wise man, he will be yet wiser. He'll become wiser. And when you teach a just man, he will increase in learning. Sounds like a good thing. All right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. So he's telling the son here the source of wisdom and understanding the fear of the Lord. I'm just going to put a box around that. It's another term that's worth going to look up in a concordance to find out what exactly the fear of the Lord is. But he defines it. He tells you it's the beginning of wisdom. So here we have wisdom again. Do the little thought bubble. And the knowledge of the holy. All right, the holy. You want to know what that is, is understanding. So wisdom and understanding are similar in that they are, that's a mindset, it's an inner man thing. Well, the holy is going to end up being, number one, God. He's holy and his word. Okay, Knowledge of God and knowledge of his word is understanding. Carry on. For by me... And this is wisdom speaking, remember? So let's put a little cloud around that so we'll know that that's wisdom. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. So a long life is given to those who will follow after wisdom. When it comes to life, I like to use the infinity sign because we're talking about eternal life here. All right. If thou be wise, so there's your thou, is who he's speaking to, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. So we have a but here, which I like to draw a box around buts and make an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way because these things are opposite of each other. But means contrast. And this usually means there's some type of choice that can be made. The if, 
if indicates if you do a certain thing then you it's a it's a condition so if you're wise you'll be wise for yourself but if you scorn you alone will bear it all right a foolish woman is clamorous she is simple and knoweth nothing all right so you have wisdom who is described as a woman now you have a foolish woman so i'm going to use my wicked sign for this woman i'll turn her o into a little female mark foolish woman is clamorous i don't know what clamorous means i don't think i've ever actually looked that up or if i did so i want to go to my dictionary and find clamorous i want to first see if i can find it in the bible anywhere else if not, I'll go to my Webster's 1828 and look for it. But maybe this is a definition. She, this wicked woman, foolish woman, is simple, which is a bad thing, and she knoweth nothing. That, that means she's ignorant. Did you know that being ignorant is a sin? Because you don't, especially when you don't have to be. Um, Ignorance can be cured, but it is a bad thing to be ignorant, all right? For she, this foolish woman, sits at the door of her house. Wait a minute. She has a house. I'm going to draw my little housetop there. So wisdom has a house, and the foolish, ignorant, simple woman has a house. And she all right, so she sits at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city, just like wisdom. So look, you have this city. You got people coming to the city, the sun, among others. Wisdom's crying out and giving instruction and teaching people the fear of the Lord. This foolish woman is sitting at her house in the high places of the city comma, to call passengers who go right on their ways. So there's that word way, and it's their way. The passengers, the people who are coming to the city. And here's what she said. And this is another quote. And I forgot to end quote wisdom. So let's see if we can find that. She's speaking yeah she says for by me all right and i don't know is she is this part of her quote right here where it says a foolish woman is clamorous um, perhaps wisdom is doing the entire quote that's a possibility and then within that quote is the quote of the foolish woman so let's just read it and see if we can find out whoso is simple okay if you're ignorant See, the ignorant foolish woman is calling out to the ignorant passengers. Let him turn in hither. That hither is her house, just like the hither above was the wise woman's house. And as for him that wanteth understanding, there it is again, lacks. Okay. Uh, him, this foolish simpleton that lacks understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Ooh, so she's enticing him to partake of bread. So wisdom has bread. This other wicked woman has bread. And she's enticing him to come and eat in secret. Hmm. So the waters here, stolen waters, I like to use little squiggly lines like water. Now, wisdom offered wine, bread and wine. This foolish um, woman is offering stolen water. All right. But, so there's a contrast right at the beginning. So we have a contrast with what is about to be said with what was just said by this woman but he that simple man knoweth not that the dead are there in her house she has dead men 
and that her guests are in the depths of hell. When I come to hell, I always draw this kind of like, it looks like a tulip, but it's really flames of fire. And that's where chapter 9 ends. Chapter 9 might not make a lot of sense if this is your first chapter in Proverbs, but of course you're going to start in 1, and we're building up uh, a case to find out who is wisdom and who is this foolish woman. So, I do go into the details in my commentary and hope that you'll join me sometime for that. Alrighty, I'm going to drink a little bit of my lukewarm coffee now. I'm going to go pop that in the microwave, I think, and make me some popcorn. Um, anyway, I hope that wasn't too tedious for you. That was a short chapter. It just maybe helps you see some of the marking um, tools that I use and of course you can come up with your own and there are many more that's just one short chapter um, if you're interested in this book of Proverbs and studying Proverbs for yourself of course of course you can do that yourself by all means um, but if you're interested in my book the link will be below and also the link to Kathy and Patty's channels who are the hostesses and creators of hashtag T Tuesday so be sure to check them out and um, you know get in there and study the Word of God for yourself uh, I've been studying Proverbs for over 15 years I think and um, and it's been very beneficial. It has helped me to understand um, all of my Bible. About any time spent studying the Word of God is time well spent. So, all right, that's enough for today for Tea Tuesday. Thank you for joining me if you stuck with me this far. And I uh, don't know if I'll see you next week, but maybe the week after. Happy Tea Tuesday.